Welcome to the second and concluding part of exploring surfaces with the Acon area. In part one, we introduced Exico's Acon area, a small and easy to use low field 13 MHz NMR device that utilizes NMR liquid relaxation to investigate and study the nature of particle suspensions. This new use of NMR relaxation for surface analysis was pioneered by Exego and provides a paradigm shift compared with traditional particle measurement instrumentation. In contrast to the well-known large and expensive analytical NMR instruments found in university and industrial analytical laboratories, the Acon area can be used in any laboratory from blue sky exploratory research and development through quality control, quality assurance, to process monitoring. Remember, any changes to the particle liquid interface, for example, increases in its magnitude from changes in particle size or size distribution, or changes in surface chemistry due to adsorption, desorption, flocculation, etc., can be quantified easily and precisely with the Acon area. Also, although the relaxation times are largely the same, whether measured using either a conventional analytical NMR instrument or the Acorn area device, surface liquid relaxation times are much shorter at the lower 13 MHz frequencies. Um, see the paper referenced below by CL Claves. This results in superior resolution in relaxation time differences and correspondingly changes in the extent or nature of the particle liquid interface when using the Acorn area. In future videos, we will demonstrate that the Acorn area is also a powerful new tool to aid in the formulation not only of suspensions, but also semi-solids, for example topical delivery systems, and emulsions. Indeed, it can even be used to fingerprint micro-emulsions for which very few techniques currently exist especially for normal routine laboratory analysis. The Acon area can be used to solve dispersion problems in virtually all industrial applications from agriculture formulations to the emerging field of nanomedicine. Energy, electronics, pharma and pigments are but four industries investing heavily in development of formulations based on nanoparticles and the Acon area will prove useful in all of those industries. In this video, we will continue to discuss NMR relaxation measurements. Our agenda will briefly reprise what is NMR relaxation time and relaxation rate. It will then focus on the two different ways, referred to as the T1 and T2 methods, in which relaxation can be measured. We will look at typical data, and then discuss the similarities and differences between the methods and what useful practical advantages accrue to each. We will examine two examples of wetted surface analysis, that for porous and non-porous materials, and conclude with where NMR surface analysis measurements with the ACOD area fit within the pantheon of traditional instrumentation for particle characterization. In part one, we defined two liquid domains, liquid on the surface of a particle and bulk liquid far away from the particle surface. The liquid molecules far away from the particle, shown as light blue, are much mobile and relax slowly on the order of two to three seconds. The relaxation time T is long and so the rate R, the reciprocal, is small. However, liquid molecules on the particle surface, shown in dark blue, are restricted and relax more quickly, on the order of only 0.5 to 2 milliseconds. This results in a much shorter relaxation time and a larger relaxation rate R. The relaxation time decreases as the particle concentration and or the wetted surface area increases. A suspension of particles in a liquid with a large wetted surface area, for example a nanoparticulate pigment, will have a smaller relaxation time than a suspension with a small wetted surface area sample because there will be more liquid molecules associated with the particle surface. 
In general, the higher the solid's loading, the greater is the measurement precision. And, since a vast number of industrially useful suspensions are manufactured or used as concentrates, Exigo measurements can prove very useful since they can be made using undiluted suspensions. For any suspension, experimentally we measure the difference between the bulk and the surface relaxation times and then determine an average relaxation rate as given by the equation shown in the slide. Relaxation rates in each fluid domain are additive, weighted by the quantity of fluid present in each domain. In practice, we observe a single relaxation rate that is an average of the relaxation rates of the surface liquid R sub S and bulk liquid R sub B, weighted by their respective volume fraction. Thus, P sub S and P sub B are the fractions of fluid present on the surface and in the bulk liquid respectively, while R sub S and R sub B represent the relaxation rate of the fluid in each domain, surface and bulk respectively. For those familiar with NMR, we can utilize either the T1 spin lattice or the T2 spin echo measurements of relaxation time to determine the average relaxation rate constants.